Tributes are being paid to a radio DJ who was abducted and murdered in Essex over the weekend. Corey Alpergin was kidnapped from a house in Enfield alongside a woman who is believed to be his girlfriend. Welcome back everyone. Today's video is going to be an emotional journey, delving deep into a chilling story that shook the core of the UK as well as the Turkish and Cypriot communities. It's a case of utter brutality, music and love. This is the case of Mehmet Koray Alpagin. Before we embark on this journey, if you enjoy content like this, make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you won't miss out on future videos. Now, let's dive into this. Mehmet Koray Alpagin, a name that resonated with the beats of the London music scene. His charisma and talent as a DJ weren't just confined to the nightlife, they echoed across his Instagram, where he mingled with the likes of Sean Diddy Combs and Salt Bay. The glamorous facade, a blend of exotic travels and high-profile connections, painted a picture of a life many envied. Beyond the glitz of his online presence, Mehmet had a significant impact on London's music landscape. As the owner of Bizim FM, a Turkish-language radio station based in London, he connected communities, bringing the richness of his heritage to the multicultural tapestry of the city. However, beneath the surface, Mehmet grappled with financial challenges and, according to prosecutors, was entangled in the shadows of the drug trade and organised crime. The summer of the previous year marked a shift in his demeanour, as friends noted his departure from the happy-go-lucky spirit that defined him. Mehmet's girlfriend, Gozda Dalbudak, was born and raised in Turkey. Gozda ventured into the field of finance, carving out a professional niche for herself. Their relationship catapulted her into a world of opulence, mingling with celebrities and indulging in the allure of Mehmet's seemingly extravagant lifestyle. This was her first time in the UK, and he was showing her all the sights and attractions that London had to offer. Fast forward to the ominous night of October 13th. Mehmet, ever the showman, took his girlfriend, Gozde Dalbudak, to an upscale restaurant in Mayfair, London. Little did they know, this would be a night that would shatter the illusion of their glamorous lives. This was the last picture to ever be posted on Mehmet's Instagram. As they returned to Mehmet's flat in Enfield, North London, the shadows of an elaborate plan began to engulf them. Mehmet's enemies, orchestrating from a Turkish cafe in Edmonton, North London, tracked their every move using a meticulously planned operation. A convoy, including a white van and two cars, were said to have been involved in the operation, to snatch the couple as they arrived back at Mr Alpagin's flat in Enfield, North London. He put up a fight, but was caught and bundled into the back of the van. Ms Dalbudak told how she was led to the vehicle and shoved inside at knife point by a masked man who told her to shut up. With a man sat on top of her, she was scared, weeping and screaming, when someone hit her on the side of her nose which started bleeding, before she was punched again and passed out. When she woke up inside the dark stadium lounge wine bar, Ms. Dalbudak was blindfolded with her wrists tied together in front of her. She heard Mr. Alpergin telling her, My love, don't be scared, and sorry, my love. She was held in a filthy lavatory with her hands tied to her arms and feet. She eventually managed to free the bindings from her hands using her teeth. In a state of panic and crying, Ms. Dalbudak shouted, but was told to shut up by her captors, who intermittently fed her some chicken and potatoes, Coca-Cola and water. The kidnappers took her mobile phone and jewellery, a yellow Cartier watch and a diamond heart-shaped necklace, and at some point she was given a jacket and a hat to keep her warm. She was held for around 48 hours before being led out of the building by men with their faces covered, who told her, no police, and do not look, go with your head down. They released Gost, but as for Mehmet, the assailants, driven by a malevolence that defies comprehension, subjected him to a savage onslaught, beating, throttling, scalding with boiling water, stabbing, maiming, and committing acts so horrific they defy articulation. The aftermath of this grotesque episode saw Mehmet's lifeless body callously discarded in the solemn depths of Essex woodland, leaving a community and a world in shock at the sheer malevolence that could perpetrate such a heinous act. His body was later found to have endured 94 separate injuries, Ms. Dalbudak, who has since returned to her home in Turkey, recalled her boyfriend telling her, My love, don't be scared, and sorry my love, 
before he cried out in pain as he was beaten. Six men stood trial at the Old Bailey, but two were cleared of any wrongdoing. Tejan Kennedy, 33, of Cricklewood Broadway, and Ali Kavak, 26, from Tottenham, North London, were found guilty of the kidnap and false imprisonment of the couple and Mr Alpagin's manslaughter. Samuel Owusu Apoku, 35, of Woodgreen, North London, was found guilty of two counts of kidnap, while Stephen Gordon, 34, of Northolt, West London, who had admitted kidnap, was found guilty of two counts of false imprisonment. Kavak was also convicted of perverting the course of justice by helping to dispose of Mr Alpergan's body and destroying two vehicles by fire. Owusu Apoku admitted the charge. They will be sentenced alongside Yigit Herman, 18, from Muswell Hill, North London, who previously admitted perverting the course of justice on 12th of December. Giving evidence, Kavak said he did not know what was going on and claimed he disposed of the body while under duress, while Gordon also denied knowledge of what was happening. None of the men revealed the identity of the person or gang that Mr Alpagin had angered or told jurors why he was targeted. If Mr Alpagin's family and friends came to this trial expecting to find out what it was that he had done that had upset so many people, if they had hoped to find out what this was about, then they would be sadly disappointed, said Prosecutor Crispin Aylett KC. The motive behind Mehmet's gruesome fate remained elusive, casting a lingering shadow over his legacy. Nedret Hussein, an international singer and songwriter from Hackney who worked closely with Kore, told My London she owed him everything for helping her launch her career. The artist, who goes by the stage name of True Blue, said, I met Kore over three years ago. We were introduced to each other by a very good friend, one who had known him for at least 20 years who highly recommended me to Corey to guide me in the right direction to release my first ever single. The brutality of the crime makes this case stand out from most others, here in the UK. The ordeal that Mehmet and Gosde went through must have been truly horrific. The whole case is heartbreaking. Unfortunately, so many questions remain unanswered. What happened that led to this? Why was there so much brutality? As we wrap up this heart-wrenching tale, Let's take a moment to remember Mehmet Koray Alpergin. Beyond the headlines and the darkness, he was a son, a friend and a figure in the Turkish community. May his soul rest in peace. If you feel like we deserve it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. On screen now are two more true crime cases you do not want to miss.